It's Wednesday, February 11th, 2015, and this is KBIA's Views of the News. Our weekly roundtable on media behaviors comes to you from the Futures Lab studio at the Reynolds Journalism Institute. I'm Amy Simons, and here with me are Missouri School of Journalism colleagues Mike McKean and Ernest Perry. On our program this week, a half an hour on the story nearly everyone is talking about, Brian Williams and the revelation that he, in his words, misremembered details about his being in a helicopter that may or may not have taken fire in Iraq back in 2003. Around dinner time, Last night, NBC Brass announced Williams will be suspended for six months without pay effective immediately. Deborah Turnus sent NBC employees an email saying in part, well, on nightly news on Friday, January 30th, 2015, Brian misrepresented events which occurred while he was covering the Iraq war in 2003. It then became clear that on other occasions, Brian had done the same while telling that story in other venues. This was wrong and completely inappropriate for someone in Brian's position. In addition, we have concerns about comments that occurred outside NBC News while Brian was talking about his appearances in the field. As managing editor and anchor of Nightly News, Brian has a responsibility to be truthful and to uphold the high standards of the news division at all times. Lester Holt will anchor the network's flagship newscast, as he has done since Monday night, when he made this rather awkward acknowledgement of the situation moment to tell you where Brian is tonight. In a message to his colleagues over the weekend, Brian told us he's taking several days off this broadcast amid questions over how he recalled certain stories he covered. In a career spent covering the news, Brian told us it's clear he's become too much a part of the news. He'll be off while this issue is dealt with. Well, I guess you could say NBC is dealing with it, uh, having to address it somehow. What do you think? Six months without pay? Does that feel appropriate? I mean, it gives them plenty of options, right? So six months is an eternity. Between now and then, they could find some way to part company. They could find a new per Lester or some other new person who can fill in and generate some excitement. Uh, it gives them time for the investigation, either internally or from all the bloggers and other journalists externally are looking into it to find other examples that would seal the deal, that would cause them to get rid of him. So I, I it's probably the best you could expect from a corporation at this point in time dealing with that kind of scandal. And I think it's one of those, also one of those situations where it's probably a transition. I mean, it was, it was unexpected. No one thought that, that this was going to blow over the way it did. But I think the six months gives them some time to, as Mike said, to come up with some options as to how they're going to sort of change the narrative. To act quickly issuing this suspension, but at the same time still have some kind of a methodical investigation investigation. One of the things that they're saying about this investigation is that it is ongoing. It is not over. Um, how about the fact, though, that it's internal, that there haven't been maybe outside investigators brought in to look at it, maybe the way that Rolling Stone brought in Columbia University's journalism school? Does it take away from the credibility of that investigation at all? I mean, I think it just depends on what they come up with, truthfully. And there's a lot of other smoke out there. We don't know if it's fire, but there's a lot of smoke, including another incident from the Middle East where he was reportedly in a helicopter and at one point claimed that some Katusha rockets being fired by Hezbollah in Lebanon toward Israel, you know, passed right underneath this helicopter to stories about Katrina and whether or not he got dysentery while he was there or saw bodies floating by his hotel, whether he witnessed a suicide. So there's all kinds of other smoke there. And if any of that turns out to produce a fire, then he's gone. I mean, there's a lot to go through. I mean, we're to, you were talking about Katrina. I mean, if you're going all the way back to that point to now, I mean, there's so many appearances by him at so many venues, both on television as well as in public speeches, uh, events that he's been at. So there are a lot of stories that he's told about his reporting and his involvement in the reporting that they can that they can flesh out. So whether they do it internally, externally, I think what they need to do is try to get to the truth of that and try to figure out whether or not these are just misrepresentations, misremembrances, embellishments, or just flat out lies. I mean, and, and it may take a couple of months in, in, in order to do that. And I think that what you saw ultimately yesterday with the decision to suspend him was kind of getting at this notion that maybe somebody needs to be in control because Brian Williams was perceived, at least for a while, as basically being in control of his own fate, right? I mean, he decided, or at least he announced, that he was going to go off the air for a while. Sunday, He's, he was the one pulling right. himself off of the anchor. He, 
yes. he came up with his apology. I mean, how many times have we said this cliche now on this show that the that the cover up is worse than the crime? That gonna, was a bad we're gonna, apology. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the program. Yeah. One of the other things there was some other breaking news, if you will, on the media beat yesterday. John Stewart announcing that he was going to be stepping down from the Daily Show at some point later in the year. Um, it, it, an interesting bit of timing, not that one is related to the other in any way, but it, Although it I heard journalists some, speculating some that it might have been connected. I mean, I, I, I heard journalists who cover the media beat suggesting that Jon Stewart might have made the announcement to try to take a little of the heat off of Brian Williams because they were friends and Williams has been on his show before. I don't know if that's true or not, but there are some people who are tying them together. There are other people, as you know, Amy, who are suggesting that maybe Jon Stewart would be a candidate to be the anchor of the nightly that, that news. There could be an opportunity for a job swap right. type I of see. situation. I don't see that happening. I mean, uh, NBC News has Which part a, don't you see happening? I don't see Jon Stewart taking over for, okay. NBC, uh, for NBC Nightly News. Or uh, Brian Williams uh, Brian Williams over going her. over the other way. Yeah. I don't see either one of those okay. two things happening. I think NBC has a credibility problem. I mean, it really goes, it really goes back to uh, the whole controversy between MSNBC and NBC and, and the linkages there. And I think Brian Williams was one of, of, of the main people at NBC who was saying we need to figure out a way to separate from from MSNBC and this sort of slant to the left and talking about credibility and those things and now all of a sudden you've got him at the center of a controversy involving credibility and whether or not stories are actually being being presented in an accurate way. I've got to say, and you mentioned John Stewart making his announcement, mm -hmm. and we ought to at least say a little bit about that. I mean, it seems to me one could argue that John Stewart stepping down from The Daily Show in terms of its impact on how people in America consume news might be a bigger deal than Brian Williams stepping well, down and from NBC. Frankly, by the time you started listening or watching the news this morning, that was the story when my alarm clock went off this morning and was listening to KBIA and what was going on on NPR. That was the lead on, on NPR. Well, was it, well before it was Brian actually Williams. the lead last night because when when I got word of it, yeah. uh, I immediately went to the to the websites of the major news organizations, and the top story was John Stewart, not Brian Williams. Um, so I, I just started rewriting this show. <laughs> I turned on the TV and just started rewriting. Right, right, right. right. I, but if you think about it, I mean especially if you're trying to talk about attracting a younger audience to get them to care about news and public affairs, I don't think anyone could, with a straight face, argue that Brian Williams has had as much impact for the positive as John as uh, John Stewart has. I mean, that's going to be a difficult replacement, if you could even replace yeah. him. I mean, look what happened when, when Stephen Colbert mm -hmm. left his show to go uh, to, the, uh, to, to basically replace uh, Letterman. Le uh, David Letterman. They created an entirely new show. So I wonder if they're going to do something similar for John Stewart because I mean he's been a fixture there for what 15 16 if not years more now. Than that, yeah. And how can you actually replace that? I mean it, it's it's something about what he brings to the table that I don't think would necessarily work for somebody else. Although I think there are at least some interesting opportunities for Comedy Central and more opportunities to replace Stewart than there are maybe to replace Brian Williams if they have to do that. Well, and we may talk about that and see if we can come up with some predictions at the end of today's program. But some have said what actually happened with Brian Williams and what he did wasn't as bad as how he and how NBC bungled the apology. You might remember this all broke last Wednesday, actually very shortly after we left the studio from recording our program. Stars and Stripes broke the story on its website, saying that it had proof Brian Williams had lied about being under attack. He was not in the Chinook that took the RPG fire. He was on another helicopter 45 minutes behind that one. The Stars and Stripes story spread quickly, leaving Williams little time to react. He had to go ahead and make some kind of mention or acknowledgement of it on that show's uh, evening newscast. On this broadcast last week, in an effort to honor and thank a veteran who protected me and so many others after a ground fire incident in the desert during the Iraq war invasion, I made a mistake in recalling the events of 12 years ago. It did not take long to hear from some brave men and women in the air crews who were also in that desert. I want to apologize. I said I was traveling in an aircraft that was hit by RPG fire. I was instead in a following aircraft. We all landed after the ground fire incident and spent two harrowing nights in a sandstorm in the Iraq desert. 
This was a bungled attempt by me to thank one special veteran and by extension, our brave military men and women, veterans everywhere, those who have served while I did not. I hope they know they have my greatest respect and also now my apology. So Brian Williams saying at one point, too, he had misremembered this incident. Misremembering then turned into one of the biggest jokes in Internet memes out there, seeing people photoshopping Brian Williams <coughs> marching on Washington with Dr. King, Brian Williams crossing the Delaware, Brian Williams walking across Abbey Road with the Beatles, all different events misremembered. But misremembering is really a thing, and there has been some reporting out there about the science of what may have happened here. I mean, you, you are talking about someone trying to remember something that happened 12 years ago, and in an effort to sort of thank and, comm and commemorate some one individual, he sort of told this story and he embellished on it. But I think what, what really has been brought to light in the last couple of days is the fact that he's told this story numerous times. So misremembering once is one thing, but to, to misremember over and over and over again, that that's that's where the issue comes And in. it then kind of became a big fish story that just right. became bigger and bigger. Well, and, and you talked about the science. I mean, it really is true that people can misremember. It's true, in fact, that people can induce you to remember something that didn't really happen. The problem, there are a couple of problems at least. One, I mean, Ernest identified this, he's mm -hmm. misremembered this event more than once, but also he would have, you'd have to assume that he misremembered a lot of other things too. And let's just decide that we give him the benefit of the doubt for a moment and say he misremembered. Okay, he didn't actively lie, he disremembered. There are consequences for being the face of an entire news organization when it's all about trust, If you whether you lied or misremembered, the consequences are probably going to be the same. With some interesting timing in that, given that for the 10th anniversary of his taking over, Nightly News, NBC started running all of these promos narrated by Michael Douglas about the trust that has been put in Brian Williams and that he will always be there and have that trust. Yeah, and can I also say, I mean, that apology, again, it's one of these apologies. It's not quite really an apology. He wraps himself in the flag and just trying to do well by all of these veterans we who helped that him word, out. We and, heard that know. word brave at least, what, two or three times in there. Yeah. And again, with a lot of eyes and we's and me's. Yeah. What I find very interesting is that he's told this story several times, mm -hmm. and why is it now that he's just been called on it? Uh, and I, I kept wondering about that because I'm, I'm sure that others have known about it. And what about the people who were there? What about uh, other journalists who happen to be in the area? I'm sure that they themselves probably going like, wait a minute, that's not necessarily what, what I saw. So for it to happen now, I, I find that a little ironic. I'll give you at least one theory that's based on at least some of the facts we know about this situation. Other journalists and maybe other people inside the NBC staff were unwilling to call a very popular guy out on something like this. What happened was that when this last incident where he was at the hockey game or whatever and was being recognized again, some soldiers who were on the helicopter put a message on Facebook questioning it. That message got to the folks at Stars and Stripes, and that's how the story came out. And several of them have said that they've gone to NBC executives several times yeah. over the course of the last decade to say this story he keeps putting out there is not what happened. But what I guess what the thing that bothers me is that yeah. how did it wind up getting traction now? I mean, Stars and Stripes, yes, they're, they're, they are a very good organization. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't know about them. They know about them now because of this incident, but they've done a lot of really good, hard-hitting journalism, but now they're getting recognition for, for basically another journalist who is misremembering something that happened 12 years ago. But I mean, that's why I say it's it's really the social media component that's the difference okay. there. You had these soldiers who knew the real story who were using social media to influence the traditional media to finally say something about this story. And you're seeing more and more of that happen. I mean, with somebody who put something out on social media and the traditional media will grab it and run with it. And I think that that means that our truth and accuracy, those those who are who are from the traditional journal from the mainstream journalism side, we're gonna have to make sure that we are telling accurate, authentic stories because if we don't, we're gonna get called on it and it's gonna spread and social media is gonna be that check.
Just go back online and look at the archive of the past year of, of views of the news shows, and you'll see example after example of where either non-traditional media, you know, whether it's the National Enquirer or TMZ or some blogger or some citizens point out a story, and then and only then do the traditional media have the courage to either do the story or they have that as an excuse or cover. I can tell the story now because somebody else came out with it first. But it- you know, in, the, in Brian Williams' defense, I also think that he's sort of, in, in some ways, being thrown under the bus here because I think NBC has has basically trotted him out there as a personality, and they've allowed him to do these things and to grow his brand and the NBC brand. And now, all of a sudden, you know that something negative has come across. He's suspended for six months, and and we should have been checking on this all along. Those kinds of things. I love when you go ahead and set up my segues for me. Um, Baltimore Sun media critic. David Zerwick wrote a column asking, what is the role of a news anchor? What is that person's job? And and scholar Jay Rosen questioned Brian Williams' leadership, asking specifically, if that person isn't leading the newsroom and setting the tone for everyone, what is it they're supposed to do? It's something we've heard and seen over and over again at NBC. Williams appears regularly on the late night shows and he's been on 30 Rock, hosted Saturday Night Live. And he's not the only one that we see on NBC that's doing this. Who can forget this cinematic cameo? I don't want to alarm anyone, but there is concern that New York may be facing a shark storm similar. Uh, Sharknado. A shark storm similar to the one that tore through the Los Angeles region last year. This is a twister with teeth. Enough said. Uh, Enough said indeed. The double Sharknado should converge with the other what? We're talking about a storm of biblical proportions, Matt. (laughs) We're still live? Yeah. Well, thank you for watching the Today Show. We now resume our regularly scheduled program. Yeah, so that was Matt Lauer and Al Roker in clips in their cameos in Sharknado 2, which, by the way, if you haven't seen the movie, don't. You've now seen 38 seconds of it. It's more than you're ever going to need to. But it raises a fair question. What is the role of anchors and reporters in the NBC News division when we continuously see them showing up in other Comcast programming in this kind of ridiculous setting? Well, at the risk of losing my own credibility, I've not only seen Sharknado I've 2, seen but I've seen them. Sharknado yeah, 1 so as have well. I. And also, you've seen Can, can we Wolf make a pact Blitzer. not to watch the third okay. one? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Wolf Blitzer has done <laughs> It, and Anderson Cooper has done it, and many other, you know, TV anchor personalities have been in movies of various levels of, well, they're all fiction, okay? I think, there. here's the problem for me with Brian Williams. Yes, there might have been some pressure on the part of the network for him to be a larger-than-life personality as the face of this entire network, but he liked it. He liked going on those comedy shows. He is one New York Times piece that you've got on our Links blog yeah. shows. Five years ago, he was throwing his name out there to network executives. They weren't coming to him. He was going to them about becoming the new Jay Leno when he stepped down from The Tonight Show. So he got a taste for the comedy circuit, the entertainment value of what he was doing, and he liked it. Which I think could be what gives a little bit of that credibility to some of the talk and speculation about him wanting to consider going for the Daily Show job. We have seen that he has the interest in doing that kind of work. I mean, I think a lot of them have the interest in doing that kind of work. I have to agree with Mike that he he took it to another level. Mm -hmm. But I also think that there's some culpability on the part of the networks because they are allowing this to happen. I mean, they could have easily reined him back in and say, look, no, you're the face of our news division and there is a certain decorum, there's a certain expectation that that audience has and and you need to sort of tone that down. Is it fair to put that on the networks though? And maybe this is me picking on NBC and picking on Comcast and some of those synergies that are going on with Sci-Fi which is the network that ran uh, Sharknado or um, the new Pop Network or a couple of these others where we're seeing the NBC talent Maybe I shouldn't even use the word talent, but the news and the the, the the news staff, the journalists, the anchors showing up again and again and again in the entertainment programming. But we really aren't seeing a whole lot of ABC's anchors or journalists. We don't see George Stephanopoulos hugging Mickey Mouse. 
Uh, yeah, I've seen some of that. I mean, you see, okay. you, you 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 see some of that. I mean, one of one of the the, the places you don't see it is yeah. you don't see it in, in CBS and some of the things no. that they do. No, you don't do. see Scott Pelley doing that. No. You don't see Charlie Rose. No, you, don't you don't see Gail and King. And Scott Pelley's newscast is number three out of the three networks. That's right. That's right. So it goes back to what Mike is, is alluding to, which is the fact that they're trying to increase that brand. And if you can get those those personalities out on all the different types of brand and seen a lot more then they think it's driving people or driving the audience toward the nightly news program. I'm not sure we've seen those numbers, but I think that's pretty much where they're going. I think there's a lot of, as with most of these stories we talk about, there's a lot of blame to go around. Brian Williams has some blame. The network has some blame. Other journalists for not bringing this to the attention of folks earlier. But I also think the viewers have some share in this too. Cause I mean, look, what do we really want? We don't want straight news. That's why Scott Pelley is number three. That's why CNN trying to play it down the middle is number three. That's why the right? daily show has the audience. Right. It has. We want people to give their opinions. We want hype. We want sensationalism. We want to be out there on the cruise ship from hell. You know, we, that's what we like. Mike, on you our love TV. talking about that poop cruise. <laughs> <laughs> so does a lot of so the public. Of people. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, it's it's an interesting thing to watch. There have also been people out there, and Ernest did it for just a second in one regard, though not with what I think we're about to see here. There are people out there who are defending Brian Williams. A lot of them. Fox's Bill O'Reilly is one of them. Here he is on Jimmy Kimmel. I could see that when you come on a show like Kimmel or any of the late night shows, you don't want to be a dweeb. All right? You want to have something interesting to say. And that's what happens, is that a journalist will, will say, OK, I was there. And then this story, to make it more dramatic and interesting, will emerge. Right. And that's what he did. Uh, he embellished the story. Now, as again, if it's just one time, he'll get by. But if it's a pattern of this, it's going to be hard for him to come back and be the main anchor on NBC. Interesting, yeah. Well, I'm, I, I think that's interesting that you have uh, compassion for him. And Look, every public person in this country is a target and with the internet and you know what it is it's a sewer and these people delight in seeing famous people being taken apart and i just think it's wrong so one of the patterns that I've seen emerge over the course of the last week is that there are a lot of people out there who are defending Brian Williams defending what he's done defending what's happened but a lot of those people who are defending them are the ones who are entrenched in the TV news culture, whereas people who are in other parts of our profession are the ones coming down and calling for a zero tolerance and saying he needs to come off that desk, NBC needs to cut ties, and we all need to move on. Well, I think if the shoe was on the other foot, I think you'd see the, a, a similar thing happen. You'd have the television people going after the print people. <laughs> uh, and that's just been a long standing sort of dichotomy mm -hmm. between the two between the two branches of journalism shall we say uh, news gathering journalism but i think what what really ne bothers me here is that you know he he needs to People need to look at his career in its total because right now he should not be defined by just this one. The last two weeks. The, the last and two a weeks. Story told and that's over. what bothers me, both from the television standpoint as well as from from the the print standpoint, is that they need to look at his entire career and what he's done in journalism, and not just what's happened in the last two weeks. I don't disagree with that, but I think the reason the network suspended him, and you, when you were reading part of the statement, they hint at it. The network believes that there's enough credibility behind some of the other claims of exaggerations he might have done that lead to a pattern of behavior if it's proven. And the other thing I'll say, I, mean, I think Bill O'Reilly actually put his finger on something. That's a really good explanation for what Brian Williams might have done. You don't want to be a dweeb. You want to be able to tell a good right, story. Right, right. It's not a justification for the behavior, though, I, I don't think. And I, I, going back to what you said at the beginning of, of, of our broadcast here is that, you know, his excuse, I mean, his his apology, not excuse, but his apology just seemed to be to fall flat on his face. I mean, I think he could have been stronger about not maybe not not saying I, I misremembered and saying, look, I just flat I got this wrong. You know, I, I was 45 minutes behind. Yes, we did get caught in a sandstorm afterwards. Here's what actually happened. Just come flat out and do that. And I think that would have cushioned this a lot more than using words like I misremembered and 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 I was just trying to to uh, to, to give a thank you to this one particular person, wrap yourself in the flag and that sort of thing. Okay, so we only have a few minutes left before we have to wrap things up today. 
what predictions do you have? What do you think six months from now we're sitting around this table and talking about when this time is up? may even be sooner than that. How does this play out if you were to make a prediction? I mean, if I had to make a prediction right now, I'd say the odds of him coming back in that role or maybe in any high-profile role at NBC are pretty small. On the other hand, when you look at what's happened in the past, say when Dan Rather made his screw-up, CBS had other people groomed waiting in the wings, including Scott Pelley. I mean, the same thing is true you know, with ABC, you know, whenever Peter Jennings came down with cancer. They had Charlie Gibson and Diane Sawyer waiting in the wings. I don't know who's waiting in the wings at NBC. Lester Holt could be that person. Savannah Guthrie could be that person, but they don't have any sort of data to show it. They've got six months to find out, okay. I suppose. But And I think if they do find out that one of those people has an opportunity or, or I don't know, maybe bring back Katie Couric or something, who knows? See, if they and, figure that out, he's definitely see, gone. See, and my fear with Savannah Guthrie, if she were to come into this position, is it would almost turn out like the CBS's failed experiment with Katie Couric and that that might not go so well either. Well, I, I would say my prediction yeah. is that for the, for right now, for the time being, it's going to be Lester Holt. I mean, usually when Brian is out uh, for whatever he's reason, guy. he's the go-to guy. Uh, he has been doing their their weekend for a while, so he does have that name recognition with NBC's audience. So I would say for right now, it's going to be Lester Holt, unless the numbers show something different in the next six months, he's going to be the person that's going to step in, into that role. Maybe the other aspect of it is that the other two newscasts now, the other two major network ABC's newscasts and, and CBS, CBS, this is a real opportunity for them because people may be inclined to do some sampling. We get into our habits and we watch whatever we like. And we've been watching Brian Williams for a while. We like that. Anybody else stepping in is an excuse for me, the viewer, to go out and sample these other products. Well, and if and, I like them. And the timing of that for these other two networks right in the middle of the sweeps period, this is an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing about it is, is that this is probably the worst thing that could happen to NBC at this particular mm -hmm. juncture because we're getting ready to go into 2016 into the presidential elections mm -hmm. and a lot of other things and now all of a sudden they're, they're swapping out uh, uh, anchors. I would say one thing that might come out of this that might actually be valuable and it's not tied to any one personality I would love to see it if we'd stop putting all this focus on the cult of the anchor. I don't mm -hmm. think young people for example give a hoot about who's the news anchor or for that matter news shows or the front page of a website or a newspaper. They care about individual stories and whether those stories engage them. And if we'd get off this cult of the anchor, maybe journalism would be better for it. I think if you look at ABC, I think they're they're kind of going in that direction with David Muir. It's not this we're going to focus so much on him. It's on the stories that we're producing and what we're what we're showing. And I think if that can catch on, then maybe the other networks will go and go in that direction. Okay. Well, I'm guessing we end up talking about this at least once more in the next six months to a year, if not several times. That music means we're pretty much out of time for this week. I'd like to thank you for spending the last half hour with us. You can read more about the topics we talked about today on our links blog. That's under the programs tab at kbia.org. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at views on KBIA. These are all great ways to watch and listen to our program again. Leave us comments or questions. See previews of what we'll be talking about next week and more. Our thanks to RJI's Travis McMillan and Maya Jackson for directing today's show to Pat Mc, uh, to Pat Akers I'm sorry for handling the audio Hannah Smith is our associate producer I'm Amy Simons be sure to join us again next week when we're back with you for another edition of Views of the News